This video is an introduction to genetic crosses and includes key important terminology. So we'll start by saying what is a gene because genetics is all about genes. So a gene is a section of DNA that codes for a particular protein and sometimes it will be said that a gene causes the production of a protein or a polypeptide chain. Where do you find genes? Well, you find genes at very particular places on chromosomes. So firstly, let's start by talking a little about chromosomes. Chromosomes are these structures found in the nucleus of our cells, and they are made of 60% protein and 40% DNA. They're a way of packaging up all of the DNA so it fits perfectly into each one of our cells. Our chromosomes occur in pairs and they are described as being homologous pairs because at similar locations on each pair of the chromosomes you will find a gene for a particular trait but you can have alternative versions of the same gene. The first 22 pairs are called the autosomes and the final pair, pair 23, is known as the sex chromosomes. So let's return to genes, the focus of this topic. A gene is the unit of heredity, and heredity is the passing on of features or traits from parent to offspring by means of genes. You find genes on chromosomes, and our chromosomes are described as occurring in homologous pairs. Thanks to the Human Genome Project, scientists now know the exact location of genes on specific chromosome pairs, and the position of a gene on the chromosome is known as the locus. So on this chromosome pair, we're looking at a particular gene and there's one copy of that gene on each chromosome and that's called the allele. It can be the same or different and it can be termed dominant or recessive. So let's use this example of eye colour to explain dominance and recessive. So let's look at this pair of chromosomes and we have one gene that's going to code for eye colour. So that is the gene for eye colour. And each chromosome has one version of that gene, one allele. The one on the left has the allele for brown eyes and the one on the right has the allele for blue eyes. So what is the person going to be? Are they going to be brown eyed or blue eyed? It all depends on which allele is dominant and which is recessive. So brown eyes are dominant over blue eyes. Blue eyes are the recessive allele. So if you have one version of the dominant allele, it will prevent the working of the recessive allele. So in this case, we have one version of the allele coding for brown eyes, and that is going to prevent the working of the allele, the recessive allele for blue eyes. If every time we wanted to do a genetic cross, we had to draw chromosome diagrams, it would take too long. So we usually use letters. So what we do first is we pick the dominant trait. The dominant trait in this case was brown eyes. And so we're going to use B's. Capital B will mean brown and then blue will be small b. But regardless, even if you were talking about green eyes, you would still use little b for green eyes. So together, the big B and the little b represent the genotype, the mix of alleles that this particular individual has. So the genotype is big B, little b. And the phenotype, the physical makeup of this person, is that they appear brown eyed. If you're asked to define the genotype of an individual, you state it's the genetic makeup of an individual. If you're asked to define phenotype, you state it's the physical makeup of an individual. And you're going to use both when you're doing genetic crosses. So when we look at this individual now, we see that they have two different alleles. They have the dominant big B, the allele for brown eyes, and they have the recessive small b, the allele for blue eyes. So we know their genotype is big B, little b. And because they have two different alleles, we describe this genotype as being heterozygous. They have different alleles. So let's look at another case. This person has two alleles that are capital B, so two dominant alleles, one on each chromosome. So their genotype is capital B, capital B, and it's termed as being homozygous because the alleles are the same. They'd still be brown eyed because there's at least one capital B, one dominant allele, but because the alleles are the same, they're classed as homozygous. So let's try one full question. In pea plants, green pod is dominant to yellow pod. So the first thing we know is that we're going to use the letter G because G is the dominant trait, green. So give the genotypes, so give the genetic makeup, that means the different letters or the same letters of the gametes of the sex cells that are produced. That's question one. And question two means give the genotypes, so again give the letters, the genetic makeup and the phenotypes, what they'll physically look like, the physical makeup of the first generation offspring. So the first generation of children that are produced when two heterozygous parents, so the parents have 
two different alleles. Their alleles are different and they're going to be crossed or mated together. So because green is dominant, we're going to use all G's. Capital G will mean green and little g will mean yellow. So now we have to answer the first part of the question. Give the genotypes of the gametes produced. So before we can start with any gametes or sex cells, we have to start with the parents. So the parents, what is their genotype? Well, it's said in the question they were heterozygous, so that means they have two different alleles. So both of them are going to be big G, little g, and we're going to cross those two parents. So before you can cross them, you have to form gametes. So you have to look at the genotype. You have to look at the alleles that these parents can give. So parent number one here, he can give either a big G or a little g and parent number two she can either give a big g or a little g so they're the gametes that are produced so now that we have the gametes let's create this diagram called a punnett square a punnett square is just like a table and along the top you put the gametes from one parent and along the side you put the gametes from the other parent and you just combine the letters so now let's combine each of those gametes along the top with those along the side. So the first offspring, its genotype is capital G, capital G, and its phenotype is green pod. The next one along is capital G, little g, its genotype, and its phenotype is green pod. Down along the bottom, you have a genotype of capital G, small g, and its phenotype is green pod. And finally, you have those two little g's that give you a phenotype of yellow pod. So that was an introduction to genetic crosses and we were looking at very simple crosses, ones that were looking at one trait, monohybrid crosses. So you must know by now that definitions are essential. If you don't know the terms, you won't understand what the questions are asking you. So learn the definitions, there are a handy few points and practice other questions.